Good morning. It's Monday, August 12, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, 180 Degrees, and our scripture is 2 Chronicles, chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the detestable practices of the pagan nations that the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He rebuilt the pagan shrines his father Hezekiah had broken down. He constructed altars for the images of Baal and set up Asherah poles. He also bowed before all the powers of the heavens and worshipped them. He built pagan altars in the temple of the Lord, the place where the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. He built these altars for all the powers of the heavens in both courtyards of the Lord's temple. Manasseh also sacrificed his own sons in the fire in the valley of Ben-Hinnom. He practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and he consulted with mediums and psychics. He did much that was evil in the Lord's sight, arousing his anger. Manasseh even took a carved idol he had made and set it up in God's temple, the very place where God had told David and his son Solomon, My name will be honored forever in this temple, and in Jerusalem, the city I have chosen from among all the tribes of Israel. If the Israelites will be careful to obey my commands, all the laws, decrees, and regulations given through Moses, I will not send them into exile from this land that I set aside for your ancestors. But Manasseh led the people of Judah and Jerusalem to do even more evil than the pagan nations that the Lord had destroyed when the people of Israel entered the land. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they ignored all his warnings. So the Lord sent the commanders of the Assyrian armies, and they took Manasseh prisoner. They put a ring through his nose, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. But while in deep distress, Manasseh sought the Lord his God, and sincerely humbled himself before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed, the Lord listened to him and was moved by his request. So the Lord brought Manasseh back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh finally realized that the Lord alone is God. After this, Manasseh rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David from west of the Gihon Spring in the Kidron Valley to the Fish Gate and continuing around the hill of Ophel. He built the wall very high, and he stationed his military officers in all of the fortified towns of Judah. Manasseh also removed the foreign gods and the idol from the Lord's temple. He tore down all the altars he had built on the hill where the temple stood and all the altars that were in Jerusalem, and he dumped them outside the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings and thanksgiving offerings on it. He also encouraged the people of Judah to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. However, the people still sacrificed at the pagan shrines, though only to the Lord their God. One of the realities of being broken is the inability to see just how broken you are. Another is how to fix that brokenness. Like the New Testament apostle to the Gentiles, Paul, the remedy for King Manasseh's spiritual brokenness could only come by being knocked to his knees, a prisoner to the truth that he had become so irretrievably broken against his solemn trust to serve the one true living God. There was only one direction left to redemption, 180 degrees. For you today... Let's give the last word today to Paul, who understood that just and righteous solutions for citizens of any era will never come from within the corridors of the capital. True redemption only comes from above. Here's what Paul says to do about brokenness in leadership. 1 Timothy chapter 2 I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.